In October 2023, Indonesia officially commenced operations of its inaugural high-speed train, marking a significant milestone not only for the country, but for the entire Southeast Asian region. As the pioneer of high-speed rail in Southeast Asia, this project carries immense potential for Indonesia. The railway dramatically reduces travel time between two cities from three hours to less than one hour, addressing congestion issues that incur substantial economic losses annually. Beyond the immediate logistical benefits, the project also opens avenues for the transfer of knowledge and technology, holding substantial promise for the advancement of the Indonesian industrial sector. Having achieved this milestone, attention now turns to the next Southeast Asian country that's set to embrace high-speed rail, Thailand. According to the Thailand government, the initial phase of a high-speed railway connecting the Chinese city of Kunming to Bangkok is slated for completion in 2026. This video delves into the ongoing high-speed rail projects across Asia. Before you proceed, consider subscribing to our channel for regular updates on developments across the Asian continent. Southeast Asia's first HSR, the Jakarta-Bandung Line. After numerous delays, the high-speed train that links the capital city Jakarta to Bandung, reaching a maximum speed of 350 km per h, is now in operation. This railway marks the culmination of Indonesia's decade-long infrastructure development under President Joko Widodo, who has been overseeing the expansion of roads, ports and airports to propel the nation toward high-income status. This high-speed rail project is a collaboration between Indonesia and China, making it Indonesia's first high-speed rail and the first in ASEAN. Some individuals express skepticism, questioning the project's profitability due to its relatively short 142 km route. However, the Jakarta-Bandung line represents just the initial phase of Indonesia's ambitious plan. The government aims to extend the line from Jakarta to Surabaya, the country's second-largest city. This Jakarta-Surabaya route, spanning 780 kilometers, will significantly reduce travel time from 10 hours by car or regular train to just 3.5 hours. Profitability is not the sole objective of HSR projects. For instance, China's first HSR project, covering 130 kilometers between Beijing and Tianjin, initially operated at a loss, discouraging private investment. The government stepped in to initiate construction, and the region along the railway experienced a boom in industries, from tourism to real estate. This played a crucial role in making industrialization China's comparative advantage. Since then, China has expanded its HSR network to an impressive 42,000 kilometers, becoming the largest and most extensively used rail network globally. According to PT Karita Kepat Indonesia China, the consortium of Indonesian and Chinese state companies responsible for building the railway, the Wush train's average occupancy is approximately 90%, serving about 7,000 passengers daily as of the end of October. In November, the service will increase to 28 daily trips, twice as many as the previous month. Looking ahead, as more daily trips are added to the schedule, KJIC aims for a daily ridership of 30,000 passengers. The government anticipates even higher passenger numbers if the Wush service is extended from Bandung to Surabaya, as it would pass through more cities, and Surabaya is a major city surrounded by industrial areas. Indeed, the Indonesian high-speed rail project is unlikely to yield short-term profitability. Nevertheless, it is undeniable that economic activities and development along the rail line will experience positive impacts. Given this scenario, do you believe it is advisable for Indonesia to extend the HSR line from Bandung to Surabaya? Thailand to have the second HSR in Southeast Asia? As Indonesia inaugurates the inaugural high-speed rail service in Southeast Asia, Thailand is actively advancing its own railway modernization efforts, initiated over a decade ago. Presently, 
Thailand is in the process of constructing its first high-speed rail, anticipated to link with the Laos-China Railway as part of China's Belt and Road Initiative. Thailand openly aspires to become the HSR hub of the ASEAN Economic Community, revealing plans for five HSR lines radiating from Bangkok in various directions, including a southbound route to the Malaysian border for a connection with Padang Besar, covering nearly 1,000 kilometers. The current focus is on the Bangkok Nong Kai HSR, a segment on Thailand's northeastern HSR line spanning 608 kilometers and currently under construction. This stretch is pivotal in bringing rail travel from Kunming to Singapore via Bangkok and Kuala Lumpur closer to reality. Expected to be operational by 2030 at the latest, the country faces challenges along the way. The first phase, covering the 252-kilometer stretch from Bangkok to Nakhon Ratchasima, is slated for completion by 2026. A noteworthy aspect of the project is Thailand's intention to glean insights from the HSR construction process, deviating from the approach of entrusting everything to the main contractor or technology supplier. Japanese rail experts' analysis indicates Thailand's determination to maintain a certain level of autonomy in HSR development. In the initial phase, Thailand is funding the project, marked by significant Chinese involvement, with both countries sharing responsibilities for design, construction, and supervision. Envision a future where a high-speed train journey originates from Singapore, travels through Malaysia, spans the expanse of Thailand, traverses Laos, and ultimately arrives in Kunming, the modern capital and transportation hub of China's southern Yunnan province. The realization of this mega-rail project is poised to catalyze economic activities, foster cross-border businesses, and seamlessly interconnect cities across countries. While it may seem ambitious, the step-by-step -step progress, underscored by the significance of Thailand's northeastern HSR, contributes significantly to its realization. The Deceleration of India's High-Speed Rail Project in tandem with Indonesia's announcement of its HSR collaboration with China in 2015, India concurrently revealed its inaugural HSR venture with Japan, the Mumbai Ahmedabad Line. Stretching over a total of 508 kilometers of railway, this project aimed to slash travel time from nine hours by car to a mere two hours via the high speed train. Initially projected at a cost of $14 billion, encompassing expenses for 24 train sets, interest during construction, and import duties, the Japan International Cooperation Agency, a Japanese government entity, committed to financing 81% of the overall project expenditure. This amounted to $15 billion U.S. dollars in 2023, secured through a 50-year loan with an interest rate of 0.1%, accompanied by a 15-year moratorium on repayments. The remaining costs were to be shouldered by the state governments of Maharashtra and Gujarat. However, due to unforeseen delays and complications, the incurred expenses had surged to $3.6 billion by July 2022. Analyses indicated a 48% cost escalation, projecting the total project cost to reach $20 billion. Initially slated for completion by December 2023, the project timeline has been significantly impacted, primarily due to challenges in land acquisition in Maharashtra and the disruptions caused by the pandemic. The revised completion date is now anticipated to be October 2028. Vietnam's high-speed rail dream awakens. As far back as 2006, nearly two decades ago, Vietnam entered a memorandum of understanding with Japan for the development of a railway. The proposed project envisions a double-track railway exclusively for passenger trains, designed to operate at a speed of 350 kilometers per h. Spanning a total length of 1,570 kilometers, 
the line would consist of 27 stations and five depots. The high-speed line is anticipated to commence at Hanoi Railway Station, traverse 20 provinces and cities, and conclude at Thu Thiem Station in Ho Chi Minh City. The estimated investment for the project exceeds $58 billion to be financed from the national budget. In 2010, Vietnam's National Assembly rejected the high-speed rail proposal, citing economic unsustainability and concerns about the affordability of excessive fares for the Vietnamese population. The project remained dormant due to its exorbitant cost. However, spurred by competition from India and Indonesia, Vietnam has recently re-evaluated the HSR project, with Japan remaining its preferred partner to avoid extensive Chinese infrastructure investments and address local sensitivities regarding the presence of Chinese workers in Vietnam. In 2009, the project's price tag of $56 billion amounted to nearly half of the country's GDP. Yet, with the country's economy more than doubling from $106 billion to $271 billion as of 2020, the project has become marginally more feasible. A significant development occurred when the government issued a conclusion on the North-South High Speed Railway project, outlining a specific goal to seek approval for the investment policy by 2025 and to commence construction of priority sections between 2026 and 2030, particularly from Hanoi to Vinh and from Ho Chi Minh City to NHA Trang. Despite potential economic viability, it would be a near miracle if the project adhered to the Ministry's timetable for construction, let alone completion. While Vietnam is destined to have its bullet train, it is likely to be several decades before the first passengers step aboard the new Reunification Express. Why the global high-speed rail race? Beyond Indonesia, India, Thailand and Vietnam, various other Asian nations are actively vying to establish their inaugural high-speed rail networks. Countries like Bangladesh, Cambodia, Malaysia and the Philippines are joining the race to become high-speed rail nations. The primary driving force behind this surge in HSR ambitions is the influence of China. China's remarkable economic growth over the past decades has positioned it as a role model for numerous countries, with its infrastructure achievements, particularly the development of the world's largest and busiest high-speed rail network in just a decade. While many nations look to China for inspiration, it's essential to note that not every country should necessarily replicate or invest in an HSR system. According to research from the World Bank, the optimal distance for HSR projects falls within the range of 150 to 800 kilometers. Distances less than 150 kilometers may not make HSR competitive with other modes of transportation like buses and cars, while distances beyond 800 to 1200 kilometers often lead travelers to opt for air travel. Another crucial consideration is that HSR is most effective in bustling markets where it can attract substantial passenger volumes. Despite the potential immense economic impact of an HSR network, the construction costs are high and not every country possesses the technical expertise and resources to manage such mega-projects. Delays and cost overruns as seen in countries like India and Indonesia underscore the challenges involved. However, when executed effectively, an HSR system can spark catalytic developments and yield multiplier effects for a country, replicating China's success story. Do you believe your country needs an HSR? Share your thoughts and leave your comments below. If you appreciate our content, please hit the like button to show your support. Most importantly, remember to subscribe to our channel for more engaging videos covering the latest happenings across Asia.